Hello, today I wanted to make a really quick video showing you how to use the calendar component of Prime React to add a date input um, or a date time input for your React app. Um, so it's really simple to use and let me show you the little example I've set up here. Uh, so it, it looks great. This is a very simple one. There's tons of options. It's definitely the most versatile date picker I've seen um, out of any, any in React or otherwise. Uh, so I'll leave a link in the description below to the documentation and you can go over all the different options that you have. But I'm going to show you a few here today and you can kind of get a grasp and play around with it in the documentation. So first you need to go to Visual Studio Code um, or your code editor and start a new React app. So I actually used to create React app and then what I did is I changed app.js to app.jsx so I can use the JSX syntax. The next thing that I did that you're going to have to do is import these three CSS files somewhere in your app. Uh, you can do that in app.jsx or app.js, uh, or you can do it at the level of the component that you're, you're using the calendar input on. The other thing that you're going to have to do is install the Prime React and Prime Icons um, package. So the Prime Icons is if you want to use some of their icons um, in, the, in the styling of your component. And they do a really good job of, allowing, of setting up some examples for you in the documentation using those icons. Um, I would suggest that I think they look great, but again, you don't have to do that if you do not want to. So to, to, add, um, to install and add that package, you can use yarn add or npm install, and then it's Prime Icons as so and prime react just like that and i've already installed it so i'll go ahead and run it and it's going to update it perfect and then i'm going to run yarn start again so that we can start the app up and go back to vs code the other thing i've in, i've uh, imported is use state because we're going to use that for an example um, and then i've also changed some styling on the the container component the app here um, just and then another container component making it a grid just so it's easier to visualize the different options. So begin by importing calendar inside of brackets decoupled inside from prime react slash calendar. Just like this, just look at this line here and copy that line into your component that you're using this input on. Very simple. And then you're going to go ahead and wherever you want this component, you're going to go ahead and just add calendar. And let's look at the basic one first. So that is, what is the issue here? Calendar is defined, but never used. Did I spell this wrong? I did, okay, I spelled it wrong. Calendar with an A at the end, perfect. So I'm gonna save that and come back. And again, this is the ba very basic component. Um, you can scroll through the months here. You can click on the years and select a year and a month and select the date, very simple. So let's look at some other options that we have here. So one is going to be the date format. So you can change the actual format of the date. So come into the calendar component. We'll actually start a new one here, um, which is why we set up the grid. So let's say do a new calendar. And before we go to close that, let's use the property date format. And this one is formatted in, let's see, it's month, month, day, day, year, 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 year. So we're gonna go ahead and format this one instead in day, day, slash month, month, slash year, year. And we're gonna go ahead and close that. And remember, you can combine all of these different properties that I'm gonna show you um, to really customize your date input. So now let's go to the same exact date here. That's an inefficient date to choose, May 20, Second, so now you can see it shows the day, day, month, month, year, year, or well, year, 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 year. And if you want to just show the 24 here, instead you could change this to 1Y and I will select that same date again. And now you can see it just shows the 24. Very simple again to add different, um, to do, to change the date format. All right, this is a quick little clip that I'm putting in from after while I'm editing the video because uh, I noticed that I messed up a little bit, so I'm just going to uh, fix it here. So I messed up putting the min date max date, which is what you're going to see next. So let's start off by just showing you the min date, and then we'll go back to me in the past showing you the max date. So 
So this is going to be the new input. Whoop, this is not the right input. We're, actually, it is the right input. So this calendar is going to be the min and max date for, um, for the calendar. So we're going to show you the min and max date properties. So if I go back to the calendar here and set the min date, I'm going to go ahead and set the min date to today's date, which is going to be, well, actually, I can go ahead and set min date to new date. I'm going to save that. And if you set the date property, uh, the min date or the max date to an actual date uh, object by defined by JavaScript, you can see that it sets the min and max date for what you're allowed to select. So I can't select anything before today's date, which is December 21st. Um, yeah, so there you go. And now I'm going to go back to set the max date from past Brady. All right, now we're going to add a max date. So I've just gone ahead and copied down a new date that is setting it equal to the 31st of December. And so we're going to go ahead and set that to the max date. So I can max date and we're going to set that equal to new date at the 31st of December 2022. I got to save that. And now you can see that that is the max date. It won't let you select anything after that date. Okay, so the next property I'm gonna go ahead and show you is the value and the on change, and we're gonna be setting it into a state. We're gonna be setting the value into a state so that you can use it in uh, on submit handlers or other handlers or functions or wherever, wherever else you want it. So display it or filter data or whatever you need. So we're gonna go ahead and head back to Visual Studio Code, start up a new calendar, and I've already set up a state called date one where we're gonna set the value into. So we're gonna set the value is equal to the date one variable here, and then on change, which is a state, we're going to send through a function. So we're going to send the event through, and we're going to run that event dot value through the set state uh, function here. So this is set date one. And once I've completed that, I'm going to go ahead and save it. And I'm going to close the calendar component, go to save it. And now if we go back, you can see that I can set a date and it still shows up there. Now I'm gonna go ahead go ahead and put a button down here that says show date and on click I'm going to run a function that console logs it or that console log or alerts it. Let's do alert and date one just so you can see that that state is changing. Perfect. So I can say date 22 and it says Thursday, December 22nd, 2022. Um, and this comes in a timestamp. You can change the format of this. Just look at the documentation in Primary Act, which again is in the description down below. Great. Now that we've gone over the state setting um, and using the state to store the value, you're going to need to use that in the next property that we're going to show, which is range. So in this is we're going to use um, the selection mode range and it will allow you to select a range of dates and save them into the state. So let's go back and start a new state. So we're going to call this const date range. Well, const date range and then it'll set date range use state null. So we're going to go ahead and start a new calendar here again. It's calendar and again value equals date range. I'm going to go ahead and allow autopilot to complete up this this component here. So the only thing that's different about this one and the uh, the last one that we used using state was the selection mode is equal to range. So as long as you set that and you set the um, the state here for a range and use that pass that through as the value and the on change event, then we can save it and go back and open up the new component and you'll see you can select a range of dates. It really is that simple. All right, so there's two more properties I want to show you. The first one is going to be time. Um, and we're also along with that same one, we're going to do seconds. Um, so let's start with time. So what you got to do for this one is add a new state that is called whatever you want, but I'm going to do date with time. And we're going to let autopilot complete that. Um, I'm going to go down to a new line, start a new calendar. And again, set the value to the state value, the state comp uh, the state variable and the on change again. So let's see, I'll let autopilot do it again. So these, the value and the on change handler are pretty much the exact same as the last two. 
the only thing that's different here are these two properties, which I'll add, put them on new lines. So show time, we'll show the time. Let's add, get rid of show seconds for now and just do show time. And so when you show the time, you'll see the hours and the minutes here, and you can go ahead and set the date and the time. Now, if you want to add show seconds here, you can probably guess what's gonna happen. And there you go, you have the hours, sec minutes, and seconds. Great. So the last one that I want to show you is going to be inline. So this is going to just change the style from a drop down input to an inline input. To do so, we're going to go ahead and add a new calendar. Again, there. And let's see, you just add the inline property, just like so. And there you got it. Since this is a grid, um, it messed up the styling of the last two inputs. But as you can see, if you are uh, properly using the styling, you can you can um, set the input or the uh, the inline style here. And it looks like this one needs a uh, state here as well. So let's go ahead and add date two and set date two. And then again, I'm sure autopilot will complete it here for us. It'll add the value to date two and on change to set the date and Let's see, there we go. Okay, so you can see the date's getting set. Um, I don't know what's up with why this is acting all weird. Um, but as you can see, that's how the inline styles work as well. So the documentation for this component, as I said before, is absolutely fantastic. There's tons more options. Um, some of your other options are a button bar, so that's down at the bottom. You can clear, you can make it um, today's date. Let's see, you got the range, you got multiple select for multiple dates. You can have an icon on the input bar, um, select multiple months, make it a month picker, year picker, multiple years, date template, all sorts of stuff. Um, even even a touch UI, so one for um, iPads and, and uh, iPhones and all sorts of different options. So I really hope that this video helped. If it did, please leave a like, subscribe, and leave any comments of any other components or um, other videos that you'd like me to go over or make videos about. So, thanks for watching.